30 years ago, I don't think everybody had a pool in their backyard, but there's a lot of people now that have pools in their backyards, and I would like to see the same thing we said about ice rinks. I wanted to have a rink for my kids that was very reliable, didn't want to depend on the weather, so I researched uh, how to do it. Dave, what do you think about these drawings for the bed job? There was basically outdoor rinks refrigerated downtown in Toronto. I wanted the same thing in my backyard and I just wanted a custom size. There you go. Try and stand up. Try and keep your balance. Our neighbours didn't really understand what we had back here. Most people thought it would be a natural rink so we didn't get a lot of people coming around but as people started to find out um, that it's, it's a real rink and the ice is really good and it's, it's available all the time and yeah, it's, it's fun. on this rink here it's like drop the puck and go you know when you're at the rinks you're spending that much money per hour coaches can't really do that you we've just got to run through the drills some of the kids get frustrated with that but with such little ice time available that's all you can do as coaches I like it a lot because like uh, when it's I find it more fun than like normal practices because it's practices you're doing more drills and like everything like has to be like perfect I think it's so sad to hear of a boy that just loses interest or a girl that loses interest in the game at the age of 13 and quits. We don't have to build the 85 by 200 sheets that cost five, six million dollars and I think that that's where we're kind of missing the boat and we should get a little bit more creative with that. I think we should try to build less expensive facilities. They don't have to be traditional size. We, we can build age-appropriate facilities for kids that are smaller, for young kids, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, that can go out on the ice and just have fun, get better while they're doing it, and maybe go on to bigger and better things with the game of hockey. I feel pretty lucky to have been able to uh, take my passion and make it a career. I never really planned on it after finishing playing hockey. Well, when he goes out and, and, and starts up something that we live and breathe it here in Canada, it's something that uh, you know is a, a, is a nice niche market there that uh, he's capitalized on and done very well with and being an ex-player, he can uh, add substance to it. Guys having troubles after their careers are over is probably more common than not. You're used to having a high self-esteem and everybody doting on you as a player and spoiling you and, and making a big deal out of your presence in a room sometimes. The difficulty I had earlier on in my career really grounded me. I always knew I was inch away from failure all the time, so I never really ever took it for granted. I think that there's a lot of passionate people about the game and they want to see their kids develop and, and be in a really fun environment and enjoy the outdoor weather. And just the seeing the expression on the kids' faces and most of the time the owner's faces are even more rewarding to me. What are you doing, Sadio? Are you skating? Wow, look at you go! Oh my goodness, there's a It's going to be well used and uh, hopefully we'll build a few good solid friendships and uh, maybe even start a hockey team going. <laughs> now that was awesome.